everyone, and welcome to I Would Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina. I am very excited about today's podcast episode because I am so ready to talk about some of the ways that you can grow your business in event design. As you may or may not know, recently I did get engaged, and through this process, I have been getting so many different packages of not only venues, but florists and so much more. And it got me thinking, how is it that all of you can really grow your business in 2024 with all the different changes in pricing and et cetera? The first thing you wanna do as an event designer is think about how can your audience find you? Meaning social media. Make sure you're using social media as a tool to showcase some of your work and also put yourself out there. A lot of times, especially clients are looking through hashtags or through location. So make sure that all the pictures you post that you're tagging them correctly and that you're also adding the location that you service. Because if you just upload a photo and it's a beautiful photo, next thing you know, they'll ask you, hey, where are you located? And to kind of facilitate the process, making it easier for the client to know who exactly you kind of cater to will make a world of a difference in your business. Make sure that you're uploading all different photos as well as crisp and clear photos. I always recommend working with a photographer that let's say is working the actual event you're doing and asking them like, hey, could I get some of the decor photos? Even if you kind of negotiate something. And that takes me to my next point is, you going out there and actually starting to network and build your vendors. It is so important to attend as you know many network events as you can, and you can find it through eventbrite.com is a great source. Also, attending wedding trade shows is great because they're constantly, you know, so many vendors that have booths and you kind of networking with them and building that rapport will make such a world of a difference all the way through when it comes to your business. So attending those events, and you might be thinking, oh my God, it's kind of like scary to go out there to these events and maybe you might be doing it alone. And maybe you're starting in this business and you're new and you're overthinking everything. Oh my God, you know, I have to go to this networking event. It's a day of the week. I'm so tired after work. No, you want to put yourself out there and start making this, these relationships and solidifying your business. Remember, you are your business. And going out there even, you know, meeting one person can make a difference. Once you're at this networking event, I want you to think about ways to promote yourself, whether it's through a business card, or now they have the tap digital cards, which are such a great source. When someone just kind of taps your phone, it brings up your profile, like your website and everything. And follow up. What I like to do is take their business card and write a little note that says, you know, like, oh, so-and-so great florist designer or Miami designer, like something that I remember when I spoke to them that I can kind of look back on and say, okay, I know how to like approach this conversation with them. And literally the next day after you've gone to that networking event and you know, chatting with everyone, make sure you follow up with an email or even go on their Instagram and send them a DM. Like, don't be shy about it, especially in those scenes when you're conversating with all these people. Having your elevator pitch does help, but I'm going to be very honest. Being yourself is the key component when it comes to networking. Just be yourself, take, but be yourself in the sense that you're also a little more bold and remember that you're there, that you're a business owner and you're there to make connections. And you'll see that honestly, it is not that difficult in the sense of working the room and mingling with everyone. It sounds easier said than done. I know a thousand percent. A lot of the events at the beginning, I won't lie, I would get so nervous going alone to some of these networking events, but I knew it was necessary that I would literally get like, very anxious and nervous and overthink a lot. But then once I pulled up into like the actual like networking event, I would just say, okay, I'm here to network. I'm here to build connections. You got this, you got this. And I would start with someone and the easiest way to do it is I would literally go to the bar and let's say I was ordering a drink or 
whatever it is and be like hi and as you know you're waiting there you know tap the next person on the shoulder that's next to you and say hi hi well where are you so what brought you to this business so like what business are you in in terms of events and they'll say hey i'm a photographer or, hey i'm a florist oh that's great what area and then you start just naturally conversating and don't overthink it and it's so important that you remember you got this a thousand percent you got this and you don't have to be so nervous and scared and the more you do it the more you attend networking events the more comfortable you'll feel all the way through in that mix of it make this especially your year that you go out to these events and network and build i give you the challenge of at least attending two networks per month this year make that your goal again from attending those events you're taking photos and uploading to your stories you're building kind of like that buzz in your business and that's something you want to do you want to show people that you're out there you're mixing and mingling and you're in the crowd you're you know you're building your network in the event design world it will be so beneficial once you go to that networking event next thing you know at the next event you'll know someone they'll be like hey so and so and you'll start building friendships because they're constantly viewing you and seeing you and that is going to be amazing in the long run for your business because as you're building your business, you having different florists, vendors, or different DJs, different, you know, just different vendors all the way around, it will help build your business because those people are going to promote your business. Like, let's say your friend, a network friend that you met is a catering company. Next thing you know, when they're hired by a client, the client will ask, hey, do you know, you know, someone who does draping and florals and they'll say yes and who will think of you your company and they'll recommend you and next thing you know you start booking more clients like that and that's what i mean by putting yourself out there and starting that whole communication process once you've built those friendships and relationships the next thing is thinking about growing your clientele like how do you get these clients once you start booking these clients what is the conversation that's going to happen now there's that next scary step i always say when it comes to business especially any business it's all about steps it's like a pyramid you're building you have your foundation and once you have your foundation you start building on top of that that's exactly what it is to build your business it's a step by step so once you get to that step of meeting clients and booking consultations you might be thinking what is this consultation going to be like what am I going to say, especially if you're new to this business? Like, I remember that first client I ever had a consultation with, I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God, I am I have, like I had everything in order, all the forms, I had emailed them, I had sent them a text confirmation to make sure we were gonna meet. And I was overthinking because I didn't have a office space to meet them at. I met them at Starbucks, believe it or not, was where I met my first event. I mean, my first client for the first event I was going to book. And I was so nervous because I was like, I don't have an office space and oh my God, what if they think I'm not good enough and all these different doubts come into your mind. And I want you to just breathe and remember that you don't have to have everything in a row. Like you don't have to have all your ducks in a row in order to just start your business. You absolutely can start where you're at. So meeting at a coffee shop or, you know, renting a uh, office space that they do like either daily or hourly, like there's a bunch of different office workspaces you can now rent. Doing something like that is not wrong. And meeting your client there, you know, make sure that you have everything in order though, like your forms, your questions that you're going to be asking and make sure that you look professional and show up and be confident because that confidence will exude through the consultation process as you're working with your client. So as you're there with your client, asking them, you know, what type of decor services are you in need of? Make sure that you have a list of services that you provide for your business. So that way it's easier for the client to look at your menu because a lot of the times they don't know what they need unless they see it. So they won't think of ceiling draping or dance floor custom wraps. They won't assume you offer that service unless they see it in your menu of different services you offer. So make sure that you're prepared in that way that you have a nice, you know, folder package of the services you offer, images of your work. And even if you're new to the business, and you don't have a lot of images, having those before and after of even just a couple of your strongest images, that is gold. 
They will love to see the way that you transform spaces and the way that you bring visions to life. So make sure to have all of that prepared and make sure that in that consultation, you're present. Make sure you put your phone on vibrate and connect with your client. Listen to what they're saying. Have it conversate. Don't force it. Don't, you know, you don't want to feel like they're, you're just asking them a thousand questions and they're just answering. Make a connection with them. It is such an important thing to make a connection with that client. So that way, out of all the designers they meet, they will go with the one that they felt the connection with. So being very genuine and making sure that you put the spotlight on your client is what's going to make you stand out from the rest of designers they might be meeting. So make sure to do that, follow through, and be present and listen to what they're saying. And also don't make false promises in the process. Listen, you get so excited when you're booking your first client that you're just like, yes, I could do that. Yes, I could do that. And you might not have no idea how to do it. Instead of saying, yes, I could do that, say, you know what? Let me confirm if those service, if that service could be done for you. Let me confirm if that floral wall can be executed within your budget and time frame. Make sure to never just say yes. Like never make a promise you can't keep, especially when it comes to your business, because that will speak a lot of volume. And in return, you'll seem a little iffy and like you don't have everything, in a, you know, everything organized and you don't want that for that first consultation. So just say, you know what, I have to confirm and see if we can make that happen for you. So I will get back to you on that. And that way it gives you time to do the research and confirm that you are able to offer that floral wall and that, you know, what the price is and so forth. Another thing is never speak pricing in the first consultation, unless you're a rental business. But as a designer, you don't want to start saying, yeah, I could do that for 500. I could do, you know, that backdrop for 200. Don't do that. What if you have that fabric and it's out of stock so you can't get more of it and you need it to do that design and let's say it is out of stock but you find it somewhere else and it's double the price so therefore you told the client you could do that for 200 but in reality you're not going to be able to do that so that's why in consultations don't discuss pricing no matter how excited we get and how much we want that business don't say yeah i could do it for 200 no in that consultation just focus on getting an idea of what their vision is, get all the details of what their dream wedding day or baby shower is, get all those details of the decor elements that are necessary and let them know that you will get back to them with a proposal in a, you know, a day, two days, three days, depends on what your business turnaround is. I say maximum should be is like three days because more than that, you're you're leaving it up to chance that they might go to somewhere else and so forth. So in that time frame, make sure that in the, you know, you state in the proposal, all the different pricing, you'll see that it will facilitate your process when it comes to design. You send them the proposal. Now what, what's your next step? Like how can you grow your business even more? Make sure to follow up with them. Make sure to also send a, you know, thank you for your consideration email to them. Make sure to send them a thank you email for, you know, them taking the time and meeting with you and you hope to make their dream day come to life. And these might seem like simple things, but these simple things make a world of a difference when you're trying to grow your business and get that deal going with your client and just growing all the way through. And with each client you work with, you take on their event with that same, you know, respect, and focus as you would even that million dollar event that you will be designing. As a designer and also as a future bride-to-be, I have one store that I cannot stop going to, and that's Event Decor Direct. Event Decor Direct has your one-stop shop for all decor items from fabrics to hardware to ceiling draping to dance floor wrap prints and so much more. It is honestly obsessing how much I can just look through here and I'm like, Hmm, I should add that to my event. As all of you that are listeners and viewers, you get iWet Uncut 11 as your code to get 11% off on the website. All you have to do is put iWet Uncut 11 to get 11% off. And you will see that your design process will become so much easier. So whether you're a designer, a bride to be, or someone who just loves the industry and loves designing, this is your one-stop shop. Every event you do, make sure you put your best foot forward and 
go above and beyond and give it everything you got. That will make such a statement and you well, not, not only will you feel great, but also your clients will leave amazing testimonials because you take care of their event as if it's your own. And that's what you want to do as a designer is very, very customer focused, just very genuinely like loving what you do. That's a big thing when it comes to growing your businesses. Absolutely love what you do. No matter how hard it gets, you love design and you want to remember and focus on that as you're building your business and getting clients. Another thing to help grow your clientele business is doing different types of vendor styled photo shoots. So a lot of the times on Instagram, you'll see that they'll do a stylized photo shoot and it has all these vendors tagged. That is collaborations that different vendors do together. And that is great for you to do when you are building your portfolio as well. So if you're a newbie in the business, don't be shy and don't be afraid of working with other different vendors. If they're doing stylized photo shoots, this helps bring in one big vision to life with less resources of you having to spend from your own wallet. So doing that as well is great because let's say someone's searching on Instagram or Facebook and they see that photo, they like it, they'll go say, hey, who did those florals? Or who did the, you know, the table set up? And they'll see that you're tagged and that helps as well building your business. Another important thing to remember as you are in this path of building your business is that you will face some different adversities and you will be okay. In the process of building your business, you're going to see little pebbles and rocks in your path, but it is okay. Stay the course and learn from every single lesson that comes as a business owner. From every event you do, I always recommend you do a review or a self-analysis report as some people call it and analyze what went well in this event and what could have been done better. So that way you learn from your mistakes because in event business, you're constantly having to grow, especially as trends keep changing and, you know, technology influences our industry. You want to stay up to date and see how you can improve. Like, was that client, you know, happy with your work? What were some of the things that they said that they felt could have been better? And be someone that's receptive towards constructive criticism because designers a lot of the times we handle things as artists because it is an artistry what we do and we take it so personal you're like oh my god you didn't like that design or she hated the florals okay don't drown in a cup of water take it in see what you know you could do better the next time and work on it you're a work in progress as a business owner especially in design you're constantly going to see your style evolve it's going to change because you're going to be improving you're going to be learning new techniques and concept you're going to you know open your horizons especially if you are someone who gets education and you know goes to take a flower class or takes a draping class you will learn different techniques and you'll see your skill set improve and that takes me to my next point which is making more money if you want to make more money, you want to make sure that you're offering quality services, quality services, and that you're investing in yourself as an entity and that you are building your business in better ways by not only educating yourself as the owner, but also educating your staff and, you know, working on improving their strengths and, you know, uplifting some of their weaknesses. That's why it's so important to stay up to date by taking different classes. That's how you learn different techniques and you're able to also charge more for your clients because your artistry grows. No one is ever born knowing everything. Like Everything is learned. I always say that you have an artistic calling, but there's so much room for growth and that's what you want to focus on. And you will continue to grow as you keep working, learning, and gaining more insight and knowledge. So remember that education is only going to make you better. And that's something that even I personally dealt with a lot. Anytime that I felt stuck or a little lost when it came 
to design or to even just improving. And I, I started doubting myself a lot. Education really helped me grow and take it to the next level. And that is another point. Once you have that, you know, confidence of education, you want to practice and practice. This is what a lot of people don't tell you in the business is that practicing and also executing and working on your time is ideal when you want to book many events in a day. That is your goal to not only do one setup per day, you want to have various setups, you want to grow your staff, you want to grow your team. So by doing that is focus on perfecting your time of execution and make sure you have a checklist as you're going through this design process, make sure you have a checklist of what the duties are in decor, who's responsible for what, be detail oriented. Being extremely detailed is what's going to make you stress less. And also it's what's going to help you not be such a micromanager. And this is no shade to those of you that are micromanagers with your business, but you don't want that. You don't want to have to hover over someone. Like you don't want to have to hover over your staff and tell them like every single time what they need to do. You want to be able to have various events and know that your staff is going to get it done because there really is no I in team. So train your team. Like you get good at not only being a great designer, but be great at training and inspiring others. So that way you're able to grow your business. Remember, there's no way that you could do this alone. An event takes a village to execute. So focus on having very detail oriented, you know, type of trainings have, you know, different, whether it's digital or even like physical binders of, you know, the different steps of how a tabletop should be set up. How, what is a floral recipe? Things like that would be very important. So be very detail oriented so that way you don't lose your mind. So in this year, focus on growing your business. And if you didn't realize it prior when I was talking all those different points, you are your business. So focusing on nurturing your growth, your skill sets, insight, it will also grow your staff, your company and everything. So take everything by different dosages, build step by step. Remember, you're building a pyramid with a solid foundation, not a unsteady foundation that's just going to break down. So take those steps, think of all the different elements necessary, and just get out there. Stop doubting, get out there, start networking, making those connections, Start, you know, getting the right education so you can get better at your skill set. Start training your staff and be detail oriented and trust the process and your business. And remember that you and only you can make the difference in making not only your business be from small to a large corporation by starting with that single step of I got this and I can do this. So start with that one step. And again, don't look at the big picture. Don't look at, oh my God, I have all these different things I need to still do for my business. No, start with that one step and you'll see how everything falls into place. So as my favorite quote says, stop making excuses because you can't deposit those. So let this be your boss year that you make the money moves, that you build your business and that you're confident and you'll see how 2024 will be a smooth breeze for you, your staff, your business, and all your dreams. So make sure to follow, like, and share, and I will see you at the next episode. Bye.